In today's video, we're gonna check out some more creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Scariest mysteries in the world that will seriously change your life. This shows all the craziest mysteries and theories from around the world, from the most normal at the top to the darkest of the dark at the bottom that will literally just change your entire life. So if you are easily scared, I recommend you keep on scrolling right now. This is your final warning. Without further ado, let's kick off part two. Today, we're talking about the Titanic, but not how you may think. Of course, there is a lot of theories about the Titanic. We know it sunk, that's a fact. People have been down and seen it. It sunk for a very different reason than you think. Shortly after the Titanic set sail, these photos emerged and have been circulating around online ever since. Have a look right there. Hmm, a pretty clear burn mark. So, oh, could there have potentially been some kind of fire on the boat before it even set sail? But wait, this is where it gets crazier. People who survived the Titanic were of course questioned and asked, what happened? Was there a great big iceberg? What happened? Not one of them. And I mean, not one of them mentioned anything about an iceberg. None of them. Even when they were all asked, was there an iceberg? They went, no, there wasn't an iceberg. Now, it's emerged recently that apparently there was a fire that broke out in the boiler room of the Titanic before it even set sail. Like, that's actually known now. Was there just a great big fire on the boat which actually caused it to sink? Or did the fire weaken the hull of the boat and the metal, meaning there was an iceberg, when it crashed into it, it made it go down 20 times quicker because the ship was already damaged and shouldn't have even set sail. Treat that follow button, it's going to get 10 times crazier, and I will see you in the next one. You're probably not going to know about the iceberg during the fact. That's probably something that you'll learn about after the, in the incident. It's not like the ship hit an iceberg and as it was sinking, people are like, what happened? And then the other people just calmly say, hey, we hit an iceberg. And then they just start panicking. Everyone's panicking. Nobody's giving answers. Um, scientists just developed a shape-shifting programmable metafluid robot that can be controlled. Yeah, this just happened. And then you have articles that's coming out and saying that it's almost like the T-1000 robot from the Terminator. Yeah, y'all remember how that T-1000 robot escaped the cage off the Terminator? Well, they recreated that. Scientists have recreated a robot that can shape shift between solids and liquid states, enabling them to perform mind-boggling features, such as jump climbing and oozing out of cages. And it reminds them of the T-1000 robot. And the shapes of the movement of the machine is controlled by magnetic fields an approach that might lead to new biomedic and engineering technologies. I swear it's like every day now that this becomes more and more like a reality. First, we started seeing Skynet on power lines. Then people start recreating robots. And now we got liquid robots, just like the Terminator. Isn't that great? But y'all let me know what y'all think about this liquid robot in the comments, though. Like and follow for more wisdom and stay tuned. Because it's definitely getting strange. That's pretty scary in a way. I mean, just imagine if this robot become sentient enough to want to rebel, if it is capable of melding itself or passing through solid or liquid objects, who's to say that it wouldn't meld or liquefy into your skin or into your flesh and ruining you from the inside? That would be something that I'd be extremely worried about. There could be a lot of damage and could be potentially done on purpose because that sounds like a really scary attack weapon. And just have a horde of those things get on a person, they s absorb into their skin, and next thing you know, they're ripping them apart from the inside. Let me know what you guys think about this kind of technology. Do you think it's something that we should be delving into or do you think maybe we should just leave this alone? Here we go. Where'd it go? In September 2020, a family was chilling at their backyard when all of a sudden they captured what looks like a giant humanoid creature with wings in San Antonio, Texas. This is the video. Check this out. Where'd it go? Yeah. Where is it? What the fuck is that? Huh? What? Does it show good on your? Yeah. Can I see? Looks almost like an angel. He zoomed in? Yeah, it's all the way in. Can I see? Get the fuck up. Here, look. Come look at it. I can't, can't see it. 
At this precise moment, the family is able to capture what looks like a giant winged creature flying in the sky. What's really weird is that its wings seem to be reflecting off of the sunlight. In other words, the wings seem to be shining. What's even stranger is that its movement seem to be organic. In other words, this is not a drone or anything like that. So, what is this? I was recording video, but then it disappeared. Where'd it go? I don't know. To me, that doesn't quite look humanoid, but it doesn't not look like a figure of some sort. And I don't know if it necessarily looks like wings flapping. To me, it looks kind of like a satellite, but it's awfully close if that's the case. I don't know what type of device that they were using to record this footage, but they were getting some pretty good zoom in shots. So either it was really not that far away or that device that they were using was able to get some pretty good zoom ins. I really have not a single clue what it could have been. It could have been a drone. It could have been a plane. It could have been maybe a space satellite. It could have been an angel or a dragon for all I know, but I really, I got nothing on this one. Leave a comment down below on what you guys think it is because I think it could be a space satellite, but I'm not sure. Hey, hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed, thank you so much for being subscribed to the channel. And to everyone that's not subscribed, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. And don't, and don't forget, if you want to be a part of questions for DK where I answer personal questions, questions about conspiracy theories or theories in general, leave a comment starting with question for DK so that I can find that in the YouTube search results and answer those questions in a future video. Do you know this past month they also found a ancient entrance to quote the underworld discovered in Mexico under a church? Insurance? What? Entrance. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> wow. No, yeah, they found it. It was talked about for I think the year 600 or something. They talked about this temple that exists in this place, and the locals for thousands of years claimed that it was a entrance to the underworld. Spooky. It just so happens to be built right under a church. And when they discovered, it, they went down, and it's like completely sealed off, so like you can't get into it. I mean, um, what would you do if you found a entrance to underworld? Oh my god. What would you do? <laughs> Tourism. Get insurance. One of the country's largest. Private bunkers, like underground bunkers, exist in Mount Dora. It's in Mount Dora. No what? Way. What? Yeah. Yeah. It's so, I didn't know that. It's so spooky. It's called the catacombs. It is theorized that the entrance to it is in their backyard in the orange Dude, groves. Keegan, let's go Keegan find knows it. all about it. It's, I mean, it was like funded by something like six families in yeah, the Mount six, Dora like, very area. Rich families. And Can it's been completely what? abandoned. During the, uh, down down there? it was during the Cuban Missile Crisis where these six very wealthy families in the Mount Dora area all put their money together and built bunkers that were attached to all of their homes. All their homes. Wow. Who owns it now? Do you guys remember about a week and a half ago, this thing crawled out of the South Antarctic? Well, guess what? It's back. And this time, it's changing all kinds of shapes. Scientists still have no idea what this is. But all we know is this thing is 2,660 miles long, y'all. What is this thing? Check this out. Hey, what's up, guys? Hope everybody's doing well and having a great day over here at Ventusky.com. Looking at today's significant wave height map. Look what's returned. This is today, the 25th. Looking at April 9th, this is what we saw a couple of weeks ago. This strange anomaly that appeared over here deep in the southern Atlantic Ocean. Again, there's something else down here showing significant waves. Once again, we're going to step this forward three hours at a time, go up to 8 a.m. You can see the waves are still there showing some sort of a disturbance anywhere from 52 feet up to 63, 75 feet. We're going to step it forward another three hours. And you can see this is taking on a different shape. It's turning into what looks like a, a giant V to where this last one back on the night stayed basically the same shape on its journey from the southern Atlantic Ocean up towards the southwest coast of Africa, remaining much like that the entire way. This thing here, as you're going to see, spans out a couple thousand miles and turns into what looks like a giant V. Here we go, still implying a wave disturbance down here in the southern Atlantic Ocean. I'm going to continue to step it forward three hours at a time. It's getting bigger, y'all. It's getting bigger. It's still the, the same disturbance in the same general area, but it's not moving to the north. It's staying down here in the southern Atlantic Ocean and getting wider. It's a much broader field, but you can still see the horseshoe shape. Looks like a big U down here in the southern Atlantic Ocean. And you're starting to see this new feature that goes through the 
the center. See it? What looks like a curved rope. We're going to step it forward another three hours. There it is. That curved line going through the, the center of what looks like a giant horseshoe occupying now most of the South Atlantic Ocean. This is tomorrow. We're stepping it forward three hours at a time. This would be tomorrow on the 26th at 11 a.m. Again, spanning a few thousand miles. Wow. So how is it that we regular people are catching these things all over on the maps? But the people who tell us the news, the meteorologists, um, how come they're not reporting anything like this? They're not reporting any of this type of things. And we're trying to figure out what is that dark energy that's under there, y'all? This has been two weeks in a row. It's came back to back, y'all. There's something in the water. They've been telling us to wash the waters. What is that? But let me know what you guys think about this video. This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I am only raising awareness to interesting situations during this interesting times. Like, comment, and share for more videos like this, y'all. Thank you for tuning to my frequency. Let's get this shift. Dang, that thing is massive. I really would love to know what that is. It makes me kind of wonder, though. Maybe governments and businesses know about it, and they're just letting us be distracted by it because there's something even bigger going on, and this is just a diversion to keep our eyes engaged on a totally different scenario. You know, I, I don't know. I'm always conflicted about these types of things because why do we not have the news talking about it? It should be something that's talked about. This is a weird anomaly. But if it isn't a distraction and that really is a giant anomaly out there in the ocean, what could it be? Could it be something opening up another portal and it's just taking hours upon hours to do it? And or could it be a creature and it's just taking hours upon hours to move across the ocean? For it being a couple thousand miles wide, that's pretty massive. Let me know in the comments what you guys think this is because if it's real, there's something going on out there and I would love to take a plane and just see if it can't be seen with the, the naked eye. So this is Amon Ra, one of the biggest culprits that's been quoted. His quotes have made it into the Bible so many times. We're going to go over him, some of his stuff. This guy here was pure evil, pure unadulterated evil. Every time you say amen, you're giving thanks to this guy. This is the guy that ordered amen to be a statement. Of course, it used to be Amun, but over time it became amen. But he said, when you give thanks for anything, you, you say my name at the end. You're giving thanks to this guy, the most brutal ruler of all time. And then you call it on the name of Jesus, which has no power whatsoever. Jesus means hail, hail Zeus. Okay, that's what it actually means. The guy's name is really Yeshua, which translates into jo uh, Joseph. He's not even close to this Asus because the J was recently added within the last hundred years. The J was just added to the name. It was Asus, and that uh, Asus, and that means Hail Zeus. Has nothing to do with calling on the Creator of the universe. That's why when people call on the name of Jesus, nothing happens. Did you guys hear about this happening in Florida today, y'all? Um, yeah, everybody is confused because this is in Cape Coral, Florida, um, because this looks like this is literally a mushroom cloud, like something just got detonated or, or blew up there. Right. Look, um, but people are confused. Right. Why does it look like that? It looks like a storm. Now, look at the horizon. Look at the horizon. Y'all hold on. Hold on. That's crazy. It looks like there's a storm over the horizon. Hold on. Look. Look at the whole sky. Right? Is that from that or is that something different? Hmm? Because, like, the whole sky is blue, but the horizon is gray. And then you see this big plume of, I don't know, smoke, dust cloud that's out in the atmosphere. And, again, this is in Cape, Clo uh, Cape Coral, Florida, where, you know, the the shuttles take, take place. Where the shuttles take off, y'all. Like, what is this about? Now, it's crazy because the next time that they have a shuttle launch is in May 6th. So people are confused as to what's going on over there. So, yeah, it's just weird. So if you guys have any information pertaining to this, please let us know down in the chat below because this is weird, y'all. Because, yeah, man, a lot of weird things are taking place right now, y'all. All I say is be on your P's and Q's. Get ready. I played this video yesterday of this incident. And I had a couple of subscribers tell me that it was a test rocket done by Elon Musk. I don't know if that's true or not, but apparently it might have been a test rocket. So if you have further information on it, leave a comment down below letting me know. If you think Taylor Swift is not a part of the Dijal system, look up Zena LaVey. Now, once again, I have to watch my words and say this really carefully, so read between the lines. 
Now, first of all, I've studied LeVay and Satanism to a T, and most of the belief system arguably is really not that bad when you look into it. But Zena LeVay was the high priestess of the Church of Satan. And do you guys want to know exactly what LeVay and Satanism was good at? Invocation. Invocation rituals are where you allow the spirit to take control over your body, to live through you. See, most of the time, people, whenever they get into the left-hand path, they just want to sell their soul. And in reality, that's not possible. And demons don't want your soul. They can't do nothing with it. They don't actually care. What the shaitan or these negative energies really want is life. They want the opportunity to live through you, to live through your skin, to be able to experience life again. Now, a big part of the shaitan are egregores. These are people who are not good people whatsoever, and they have residual ego that kind of gets left behind. So you take Taylor Swift's parents, which had a very strong thirst for fame. They wanted to live through their daughter. And we're just going to say what if here. What if on January 28, 2004, Taylor Swift's parents met with the Church of Satan? And what if they did an invocation ritual that connected to the egregore of Zena LaVey? Wouldn't that be a pretty crazy situation? I'm going to go ahead and let you guys look that up on your own time. Now, whenever I say Taylor Swift is the Dijal, obviously I mean the Dijal system. We have a pretty good description of what he's going to look like. But the Dijal is everywhere, all over the place, all throughout Hollywood, all throughout the media, all throughout everything you consume. If you live in America, you've had contact with the Dijal. She's already been busted countless times doing rituals in her shows. And whenever you go through her lyrics on many songs, they're not pure love songs. They're not breakup songs. They are temptation. It's right in front of your eyes, people. All you have to do is look at it and accept that this is true. I went to see this shit for myself when I was 18 years old. This is one of those Appalachian Mountain stories that just blows my mind every time I hear it. It's the legend of the Mothman. Between 1966 and 1967, he terrorized this small town of Point Pleasant, West Virginia that has about 4,000 folks. And when I say terrorized, over 100 people came forward to report this Mothman was in their backyard or was over their car while driving. This town was terrified. People were snapping pictures left and right, and someone snapped this one of the Silver Bridge. What the fuck is that? Here's the other suspicious part about this picture. This was taken about 20 minutes before the Silver Bridge collapsed. Look, December 15th of 1967, the Silver Bridge collapsed, leaving 46 people unalived and two people never accounted for. Now, some people think that the Mothman was terrorizing this town as a bad omen, as a warning of what was to come because he was spotted right on the bridge, right before it collapsed. Like I said, I went there when I was 18 years old and the vibe in this town is Mothman was 100% real. And here's the other part that I find suspicious as shit. Not only was Mothman seen in Point Pleasant, West Virginia shortly before disaster, he's been seen all around the world right before disaster occurs. Now, the last spotting of the Mothman was at O'Hare International in Chicago. And I beg of you to just Google O'Hare crash. That says it all. I can't believe I'm saying this, but NASA are doing what? Yeah, this is nuts. We are absolutely doomed. So as I'm sure you know, there's been a lot of discoveries. NASA have been in the headlines doing a few different bits this year, trying to find life out there. The James Webb Telescope has discovered literal city lights on another planet and other planets that could contain life. But this just, you know, probably tips the iceberg. So there's two things. And the second one, <laughs> yeah, I just keep on scrolling past that bit. But first of all, scientists have found a planet which could be more habitable than Earth, which is great, and are in the stages of comparing data and seeing if there is life on it right Right now. So the planet has a rating of 0 0.836, which is actually higher than the planet we're on right now, meaning it's more sustainable for life, and it's smaller than Uranus and Neptune and has a temperature of around minus 40 degrees. I'm not going to live in minus 40 degrees, what? Who's going to do that? But there's evidence that there could actually already be life on that planet in some way, shape or form, even if it's just micronisms and stuff. But they're running tests on it, so I'll keep you updated on that. And the main one, NASA is finally actually doing this. So there's been a lot of talk about Europa, which is one of Jupiter's 11 moons. Do you, do you need more than one? And this probe called the Clipper, which has been preparing for a while, is now actually set to go to this moon to investigate it. Because apparently, for one, there could potentially be life here, but they're also seeing if this could be a habitable place for life. Again, I am not going to move and live on a moon, thank you very much. And yeah, it's probably quite small, so I'm all right. But yeah, they think there could also be some forms of life on this planet, which they can use, I guess. But yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see what they do find on this planet, but it's going to take a while to get there. But as always, hit that follow button and I will keep you updated. I think this kind of stuff is really cool. You know me, I'm not a huge believer in NASA. I do have hopes that what they're doing is real and not just some kind of Ponzi scheme to take my tax dollar. 
but I do really hope that the stuff that they're doing is real. But I have my doubts. It just makes me wonder though, why are they so interested in finding life on other planets if they're worried about other life existing on other planets disrupting religion, you know? It just makes me wonder if they plan on enslaving those planets and utilizing the living life that's on them planets for their own benefit. Which would, which would be kind of sucky if that's the case. Let me know in the comments of what you think about this. Have you guys ever seen something like this? One of my people sent me this today. This was in Benton, Arkansas at 7.30 in the morning. Bright and early in the rising, y'all. Check this out. Man, look at that. You see that? You see the definition on that cloud? Is that is that a cloud, y'all? It looks like the sky is literally splitting. Oh, man. Wow. And y'all see all the darkness inside of there, y'all? Y'all see that dark energy in there? Why is in that blue light? What is going on? Fucking got going on up there. Look at them damn things sitting. Look at the look at the clouds. What is the wow? Y'all see the clouds? They're like punch hole clouds. Y'all see that? Yeah, I just noticed the clouds. Look at the clouds, man. This looks like CGI, bro. This no way. Why does it look like that, y'all? Oh, man. Look, look, look. It look like craters in the sky. Hmm? Look like craters in the clouds. Why it look like that? That's crazy. What y'all think this is? What do you think that was about, y'all? That's crazy. Imagine walking outside your door and seeing that. Like, that's a, that's Independence type stuff right there. That's some Independence Day type stuff right there. Again, things are getting rampant. The energies are increasing, intensifying, man. Y'all see it. This is literally a new earth. This is not the same earth that we knew. But let me know what you guys think about this video. This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I am only raising awareness to interesting situations during these interesting times. Like, comment, and share for more videos like this. Thank you for tuning to my frequency. Let's get this shift, y'all. Peace in. Y'all, are we living in the year 1716? We could be. This video is going to be for your minds. Buckle up because Buttercup is going to be a rough ride. Now, as I was saying, we could potentially be living in the year 1716, and I'm going to explain this. So as we all know, the Ethiopian calendar is eight years and some change behind us. The Ethiopian calendar has 13 months. 12 of those months have 30 days, and the last month, the 13th month, has five or six days, depending on if there's a leap year or not. So just for fun, I put in on the converter to see what today is in the Ethiopian calendar. 2024 turns out to be 2016. So there you have that. We're in the year 2016 according to the Ethiopian calendar. Now here's where it gets tricky and I need you to pay attention, okay? This is the Julian calendar. The calendar that we used before we switched to the Gregorian calendar. The Julian calendar, which was made by Julius Caesar, miscalculated... A solar year by 11 minutes, which in turn miscalculated when the change of the seasons were. Plus, there was too many leap years built into the Julian calendar, so they had to switch to the Gregorian calendar. Which is crazy because we have leap years in the Gregorian calendar as well. And we switched to the Gregorian calendar in 1582. And the Gregorian calendar was made by Pope Gregory VIII. The Gregorian calendar is now used globally except for in Ethiopia because they have their own calendar that they implemented in the year 400 AD. I think that's the most accurate calendar that's out there, but eh, I digress. So, now it is said that since we switched to the Gregorian calendar from the Julian calendar, we lost eight years in translation. Since the Gregorian calendar is off by 11 days per year, we have lost over eight years, putting us in the year 2016, agreeing with the Ethiopian calendar. So that puts us back in 2016. Keep up. Like I said, those eight years missing, take eight away from 2020. You get 2012. The Mayans predicted the world was going to end in 2012. Okay, 2020 was actually 2012 according to the calendar, right? So what happened in 2020? COVID came on and changed the world as we knew it. The world has never been the same since then. So the Mayans probably weren't wrong. Peter Turchin has a theory based on the cycle of violence that happens every 50 years that actually makes this kind of accurate. 
He predicted the next surge of violence was going to be in 2020, and it was. So it makes it kind of accurate that we have those eight years missing. If you want, in another video, I can go over his theory more in depth for you because it's kind of interesting. So let me know if you want that. Now, let's get into how we have those extra 300 years to make it 1716. It's alleged that the years 614 to 911 never happened. And that's where those 300 years comes from. And the reason for that, they were written into history. But the reason that people don't believe that they existed for real is because there's no new literature. There's no new, like, buildings, no new technology. Like, those 300 years were super quiet. There was no plagues. There was nothing of historical significance to call attention to those 300 years. And for nothing to happen in 300 years of historical significance, that's kind of crazy. Like, that's unheard of. No wars, no nothing. So they allege that Pope Sylvester II wrote those 300 years into history so that he could claim the throne in the year 1000. Where Pope Sylvester II wanted to rule the throne, but he was supposed to rule the throne in 703. And he wanted to be ruling the throne in the year 1000 because he had an obsession with millennianarianism, which is an obsession with the millennium, the 1000 years. And with that being the first millennium, he wanted to be in charge when it hit 1,000 years. Also, with these 300 years being written into history, who could claim the bloodline for the kings, okay? If they wanted a certain person to be a king, those 300 years were written through to make whoever they wanted part of that king's bloodline. So they could have any king they wanted at that time. With that being done, they could make anybody they wanted part of the king's bloodline. It has been alleged that the Roman Catholic Church has forged and predated documents by hundreds of years. So if those 300 years didn't exist, there's so many things that didn't exist, like Charlemagne, Alfred the Great. They never existed if those 300 years didn't exist. They were all just fictitious characters made up to make it look like something happened. So take the eight years we lost by switching from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar. That's eight years. Now take... The 300 years that were supposedly allegedly written into history were 308 years behind, which puts us in the year 1716. How crazy is that? Like, wow. What do y'all think? I've heard this theory before, and it makes sense to an extent. And I've always wondered, you know, about our history. Because even when I was in school and we were told history stories, I was always questioning, which I got in trouble for a lot, but I was always questioning if they were real historic happenings. Because who's to say that this stuff wasn't just written down by someone to give us the imagination of an epic story of whatever it may have been, whether it was war, of some kind of conquering, or some kind of ruling those could have been made up and we just believe it to be history because we were told that that was our history. So all of time could be false. And to me, that's pretty crazy and not too far out of the realm of possibility with how many liars we have out there in the world. Who's to say that one of them did not fabricate all of the stories of history just to fit a certain narrative to help our mindset be more directed towards wherever it needs to be. Pretty interesting stuff. Let me know your thoughts on this. Puts the forehead in there and the shaman taught him a sound frequency said with symbols. Jerry has shared it with me and has asked me never ever to repeat it. If Jerry got his forehead and did this chanting of this frequency just correctly, he would literally disappear and would go to another dimension, the dimension of where the gods live, and hopefully come back. I was going to ask, can you come back? His wife is 100 feet away. She is watching the entire scene. Jerry gets down on his knees. He <clears throat> leans forward with his forehead. He puts it in the rock. Many, many times he says this frequency. She sees him disappear, oh, literally. He goes to a white place. It's like a laboratory. It has a hard floor. And, and then this male voice comes and starts talking to him. What happens next with Jerry? We can at least share his words. He said that I was 
on another world, that it was outside of my universe. So I wanted to understand how that's possible. And he says, well, there are many universes, and you have just passed from yours into ours. All right, so where is this universe? He said, it wouldn't do me any good to even try to explain it to you. I asked him how I'd gotten there. Well, apparently, whoever they are had been very curious about the nature of the universe. They tried to recreate a model of the universe. He was talking about how they were colliding particles, and somehow a spark had occurred, and the spark didn't go away. Instead, it started growing, and as it grew, it started accumulating and creating more of itself on its own. It was quite large, and they had created another universe. They weren't planning on doing this, and it had evolved. And it evolved quite rapidly. I said, well, I don't understand this because we think the universe is billions and billions of years old. He says, well, where you are, you measure time much differently. Time is different in every universe. And when he was telling me about this, they were really very afraid that it was going to continue growing and it would just overwhelm them and then what would happen to them. And that what they had discovered is that they were inside of someone else's universe, just like we were inside of theirs. He says, it's just layers and layers. There's very little that separates one from the other. And they had learned that life had started to populate throughout that universe. They had made. Yeah, they were fascinated by this. Curious as can be how this was possible. And this doorway that I had gone through was something that they had put in place. They had these doorways throughout our universe in various places. They had been sending scientists in there to study the universe because this was a whole new realm of science for them to explore. And when they started discovering life in there, well, they were pretty shocked. Apparently, I'm not the only person who'd ever come through that doorway. And apparently these doorways go to other places on this planet as well as to other planets. The only thing that I can figure is that moving from one point to another was outside the dynamic of time altogether. That these doorways are instantaneous passageways to other places. Logan Paul and KSI seem to be in real big trouble, you guys. So they released this drink called Prime. Now, Prime is specifically tailored for children because you can see how colorful it is. It has been discovered that their drinks contain parasites or also known as morgellons. Yes, this is what you're looking at over here. And it also contains chemicals known as PFOs or forever chemicals. Check this out, y'all. Prime is now getting sued and you should be seriously concerned if you had any Prime since it released. So Prime is now going through a new lawsuit after it was discovered that their drink has PFOs, which is forever chemicals. But what's really concerning is the fact that the lawyer who tested their drink is claiming it has three times the amount of forever chemicals a human can safely have in their lifetime. And the lawsuit is claiming they found these forever chemicals in the grape flavored Prime drink. However, it also seems like other flavors might also have these chemicals because other Prime flavors are being tested. And we're going to find out after the lawsuit is approved. One lawyer on TikTok actually spoke about this and said he had a 10 year old and his mother talked to him about how her son got leukemia after drinking prime now knowing that prime contains these chemicals it's very much likely because of it these chemicals are known to cause cancers and deteriorate your health since they're forever chemicals and your body can't get rid of them prime has three times the amount of these chemicals a person should have in their lifetime which is insanely concerning and all we can do is hope that prime doesn't contain any of these chemicals which might be unlikely so if you still drink prime or have any make sure you dispose of all of it until we find out what's going on with logan's drink Again, these drinks are tailored specifically towards children because they're very colorful and not to mention the demographic of people who listen to Logan Paul. So literally everybody is in on keeping the food and the drinks at a low vibration rate so it messes with us physically and spiritually. You guys see them going after the children in more than one ways. Y'all see that, right? So this video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I am only raising awareness to interesting situations during this interesting time. And truth be told, the more colorful something that looks, the more you should stay away from it unless it's fruit. Let me know what you guys think about this video. This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. Like, comment, and share for more videos like this. Thank you for tuning to my frequency. Let's get this shift.
Peace. Dang, that's really crazy and kind of scary. I know there's a lot of kids that really like to drink Prime. I've never personally had it, and I don't think I'll ever have it because that's not really for me. I don't do the whole G Fuel thing or Prime or whatever all the other special drinks are. I personally just like water, but dang, that's something to look forward to because that that's going to really get them in a lot of trouble. And hopefully everyone that's consumed these products at a large amount at that are doing okay because this isn't good for you. But I had a second experience in 2010, which is well documented. I've talked about it. It took years to come out about it because I basically lost my whole family over this. <laughs> no way. Yeah. yeah. You came out of the closet? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Closet. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. But yeah, tell, me, tell me, what, um, what happened? So 2010, uh, I came home. I was working on this big project called um, Fort Terra Nova, which I built. And Fort Terra Nova, it was, it was on the History Channel. Uh, a, a countdown to apocalypse the uh Nostradamus episode and anyway so um I was working on this project I come home I'm looking at ESPN and I'm looking at sports at about nine o'clock p.m all the lights turn dim the tv turns off and I thought my kids were playing a trip, trick on me because they lived up in the room behind me up on the second floor and I look up and there's nobody there when I turn around there were these two beings right there get the fuck out of here yeah and uh whew. Yeah, hold on. Whoa. Sorry. No, no, no. Why do you have to break yourself, man? No, 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 So they were right there. I'm sitting in a chair about this high, so they were right here in my eyes, and, uh... Yo, Alex is freaking out yeah, right no. now. This is wild. Okay, okay, okay. All right, let me get myself together. No, so, no, take your time. <clears throat> so they were there. They had the big almond eyes like you see on TV. I swear they did. So but, you're two beings in front of But you. they didn't look like they were real eyes. They looked like coverings of some type. Um, and they didn't communicate with me through any kind of telepathy that I can tell. But my, I felt like my brain was shaking in my skull to the point where it started hurting. And I started screaming, but no sound was coming out of my throat. Mm. I can feel the air coming out, but I couldn't hear it myself. And you were awake during this period. You I weren't taking awake. a nap or anything I'm like that? I taking a nap. No psychedelics. Of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, my whole house, everyone was in my wife at the time. My, my you know, my ex-wife was in the, in the bedroom right behind the next wall. My girls were in that side of the house. I split four pan. My boys were in that side of the house. The house was full of people. Nobody heard us or anything. I was screaming. A few seconds later, it stops, and they turn around, and they, they don't walk like a person. They kind of dangle. So they kind of dangled away, and they went right through the wall. And then, boom, the TV comes back. The lights come back to normal color. That's when I went running around the house, and it was just traumatic for everybody, you know. Um, and it was like the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, you know, there was other reasons why, but, you know, I ended up uh, just destroying my, my, my one son, Giovanni. He's told me I'm scared to even come around you. And still to this day, he rarely ever calls me or comes around. It's kind of like I, kind of like I lost my son. I made no money off of this. I got no exposure off of this. That's why I kept it quiet for so long. Uh, you know, lost my family. Um Created a lot of dissension. I remember we were on a highway one day and, and my wife was driving at the time, my ex-wife, and she slammed on the brakes and, you know, I was like, just get out of, get out of the car, you know, because it was the kids were scared. And I was like, I'm saying I'm sticking to my story. I'm not changing my story because this really happened to me. And they just didn't want to hear it. But her parents were Jehovah Witnesses. So mm. it was, everything was of the devil. Yeah. You know? Wow, I didn't expect to see Billy Carson get so emotional over this. This was pretty crazy. And I could only imagine if what he is saying is true, and so many people cut him down a lot, and I understand why. I mean, he could potentially be a huge fraud, but, but a lot of people cut him down and just, you know how much it has to weigh on someone, especially if they are truthful, and to have his whole family leave him because they're just tired of all of the stuff that's happening around him because he's really deep into all of this knowledge, that's got to be tough. And for him to get really emotional like that, I don't know if it was real. It could have definitely been fake. I didn't really see him cry. He just really got choked up about it. It just makes you wonder, you know, if, if what he's talking about is true, he's got to be really weighed down. That's pretty crazy. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.